Uh, good, a- good afternoon, happy Sabbath, everyone. Look at so many happy faces. So far, the investor is going well and night. So today, my name is Daniel, and me, Kayla, and Manny will be presenting you a um, sermon today. Um, the theme of this sermon is a servant of God and a friend to men. Now, three weeks ago, I received an email from, from the Pathfinder Club saying that you, ha- you have to, um, for the investor, you'll be doing a, a sermon. And I was like, what? And I'm like, this must be wrong because you must have the wrong person. But then you, they said, no, you're actually doing a sermon. So I was kind of nervous. However, two more people are doing it with me. So I'm like, OK, thank God. And, but however, this, the sermon here, I like, I like how the topic is a servant of God and a friend to men, because it kind of relates to Pathfinder and what majority Pathfinder is all about. Before we get started, can we, have a, can we bow our heads down for prayer? Dear we Father God, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath morning that you blessed us with your showers early, earlier this morning, dear Lord. Thank you for protecting us, that you made us see another day, dear Lord. And dear Lord, as me, Manny, and Kayla preach this sermon, dear Lord, oh Lord, take our lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with your love for yourself, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> servant of God and a friend to men, what does that mean? Well, this phrase is in the Pathfinder Pledge. The Pathfinder Pledge goes by, by the grace of God, I'll be pure, kind, and true. I'll keep the Pathfinder law. I'll be a servant of God and a friend to men. Right there, at the last sentence of the Pathfinder Pledge, that is where the phrase comes from. Well, Pathfinders, what does it mean? Well, Pathfinders is all about, majority is about serving God, serving others as well, also serving our community. Um, One example of how we Pathfinders uh, serve others in our community and serve God is when we were in Prince Edward Island last summer in August. Now, it was a missionary trip because there's a new Seventh-day Adventist church that was newly built there. But however, because it was was a new Seventh-day Adventist church, a lot of people didn't know that there's a Seventh-day Adventist church. So our goal was to to tell um, people that if you, I mean, to tell people that who like listening to the word of God, that's their new Seventh day Adventist church. So we gave them magazines about Jesus Christ and we, what was, um, yeah, and we also gave them the address as well where it will be located and what time service will start. And I like, the mis- I like the missionary trip because it was like serving God. And one of the things that I'll never forget is one time when me and my grandma, we went shopping there. And as we were paying our, st- paying our items at the cash register, we showed our gratitude to the clerks by giving them a little brochure. And the brochure was, it was small and it was about like, where is God when I'm hurt? And it's uh, actually a really good brochure. And... So we did, we, we, we hand brochure to everyone around the mall. And one thing I'll never forget is last time when we were heading back to the campus. And I remember I came across this cab driver and his name was James. Now James, he was, he was a Christian man, but I didn't know he was a Christian man until, I, until me and my grandma, we discussed him about the word of God and this man. A very young man, he said that he's a love, he loves Jesus so much and he prays every day and reads the Bible every day. And it's so fascinating of hearing his story. So, but however, he didn't know that there is a new Seventh day Adventist church. And that, and I was like surprised. I'm like, what? You didn't know a Seventh day Adventist church? And he says, no, I have not realized there's a new, new Seventh day Adventist church that was built. So then we gave him the address. And we told him that what time service will start. And then he said, thank you so much. Next time I'll try and visit that church one day. Apparently on Saturday, the next Sabbath day, I didn't see him. But I'm pretty sure he still visited that church. 
but what I'm saying is like these are this is like the example of serving God and being a friend to men because not only we did that we also fed the homeless people there and we also cleaned people's like business and restaurant windows as well which shows serving our community cleaning their community and serving God as well today we will be discussing those two main parts of serving God and being a friend to men and what does the Bible say is about it Good afternoon, church. Being a servant of God. If I were to ask you all right now, what is a servant of God, what would you say? Would you say the obvious, someone who serves God, or someone who follows whatever he says? Because it's not wrong, but it's a lot more than that. The simple definition of a Christian is a follower of Christ, which leads to becoming a servant of Christ. Open your Bibles to John 12, verse 26. It says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Jesus called his servants. Jesus called his followers servants. If you are truly striving to become a follower of Christ, you must become a servant, and as Christians, we should all want to be, become successful servants for him. But how can we become a sex, successful servant? First, we have to develop a servant mentality. We need to change we need to have the mentality that our purpose on this earth is to serve God and that he is in charge. We need to be thinking, we are servants of the king. Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. We need to change our way of thinking from me-centered thinking to him-centered thinking. Amen. We're here to serve God, not the other way around. Amen. In Matthew 10, verse 24, it says, A disciple is not above his teacher, nor servant above his master. Look at the way the Message Bible translation puts it. A student doesn't get a better desk than her teacher. A laborer doesn't make more money than his boss. That makes it pretty, pretty clear, doesn't it? He's above all, in all, till the end of time and beginning of eternity. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. A successful given, servant gives all that they have to the glory of God. Next, we have, the, we have to have the determination to serve. It's not enough just to have a servant's mentality. We need to be determined to serve and determined to help. We need to be giving our time, giving our energy, giving our resources, and giving ourselves. God loves a cheerful giver. As, 10, as Mark 10, verse 45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The third step is that we need to commit. All of us here listen to someone or something. Some of us listen to our family or friends' advice. Some of us listen to the opinions of the so-called experts, or some, just, some of us just follow the social norm but we all fall and listen to, listen to something. A successful servant of God follows God and listens to him. But what does it take to follow God? It's not complicated, just do as he says. Amen. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians 3 verse 17. To be committed, we need to trust that God is in charge. We need to obey his word and we need to walk in faith. God may send you to do something you're afraid to do, something you don't believe you can do, or something you just don't want to do, but you should. Because if God sends you to do something, there's always a good reason behind it. You were chosen and needed somewhere to serve him. You need to trust him, obey him, and have faith that he's leading you in the right direction, because he always will. Never have doubt in him. Just as Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6 says, trust the Lord, trust the Lord with all your heart, and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Amen. Now, what is the fourth and final step to becoming a successful servant of God? We need to start serving now. Many people are waiting for the right time and the right place to start serving. But really, the right time is now. The right place is to start right where you are. The minute you start meeting the needs around you, you become a servant. To be a servant of God, to be a servant of God you don't have to fly halfway around the world to find people. All you have to do is look at the person next to you. With these four steps, we can all be servants of God. If we have the mentality, the determination, be able to commit and start now. Whatever you do, work hardly as for the Lord and not for men. Knowing that from the Lord, you will receive inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Colossians 3, verse 23 to 24. So if you aren't already, are you ready to become a servant of God? Good afternoon, Willowdale. 
I'll be looking at the second part of the theme, a friend to man. So what does this phrase really mean? To answer that question, we will be looking at a few passages of scripture. The first is Matthew 22, 34 to 40. This text narrates when Jesus is questioned by the Pharisees as to which commandment is more important. Jesus replies that the most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul, and that the second most important is to love your neighbor as yourself. So, being a friend to man has something to do with loving your neighbor. But what does Jesus really mean by that statement? To understand this statement, we have to understand what Jesus means when he uses the word neighbor. We may think of our neighbor as the person that lives next door to us, but Jesus' definition is much broader. He explains himself in Luke 10, verses 25 to 37, when he tells the parable of the Good Samaritan. Please turn with me to Luke 10, and we will read verses 30 to 35 together. Verse 30, in reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him, and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after them, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. In the story, the Samaritan goes out of his way to help another man in need. More importantly, the Samaritan does not question whether the man is a Jew or a Gentile, but helps him because he can and he should. The Samaritan goes above and beyond when he tells the innkeeper that he will pay for any extra expenses in caring for the injured man. What can we learn from this story? The, this parable ties right back into the commandment about loving our neighbors. I think that we can say that the injured man was a Samaritan's neighbor, and I think we can expand the definition of neighbor to include anyone that is in need. The commandment basically boils down to helping those in need because that is what Jesus would do. So what does being a friend to man mean? I think that a friend to man is someone who tries to help anyone they can, someone who shows kindness to everyone they meet, someone that always tries to do as Jesus would do. How can we become a friend to man? Being a friend to man means that we always show kindness to everyone we meet. In the parable, a priest and a Levite walk right by the man and do nothing. This could be us if we are late for work or school and are rushing by. We need to be aware of the world around us and always looking for ways to help others. By helping others, or even just being kind to them, we are spreading God's love. Through our actions, they could come to know God themselves. I read a story online that I thought I would share today. There was a student living just north of London, England. This happened a long time ago. He found out that evening that his mother was in the hospital and was not expected to survive the night. His father desperately wanted him to come home that night to see his mother. He rushed to the train station to find that he had missed the last train. The only train he could take would take him only halfway there, but he would miss the next connection by about 20 minutes. Out of desperation, he bought the ticket and boarded the train. After he boarded the train, the conductor asked him for his ticket and stamped it. Noticing that he was crying, the conductor asked him what was wrong told him, and the conductor expressed his apologies as he boarded the train. Ten minutes later, the conductor came back to his table and told him that the train he needed would be waiting for him when he arrived. He looked dumbfounded at the conductor, asking if the train was late or something. The conductor calmly told him that he had radioed ahead and asked that they hold the train until he arrived. He desperately wanted to thank the conductor, but the conductor told him that if he wanted to repay him, you should pay him back by helping out someone else in trouble. Yes, this is what being a friend to man really means. 
we would go out of our way to help a stranger that we will probably never see again. I think that Hebrews 13 verse 2 sums it all up. It says, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. I think that it would be pretty amazing to be able to interact with an angel. But back to the verse. Basically, Jesus came to earth to serve others. He did this to set the supreme example for all of us. We are supposed to serve others in every opportunity to we, that we get. To close, I want to challenge you all to help someone in need and to be a friend of man. So, part of serving, being a friend to men, is to help everyone in any opportunity of way. And then being a servant of God is doing things that God asks you to do, even regardless if you don't want to do it. This is why we have Pathfinders. This is why these young warriors are invested because not only because they earn their complete honor requirements, but also because they contribute themselves to serve God, to serve other, and to serve their community. That's my friends, is why we have Pathfinders. If you look in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, Let us not become weary in doing good. For the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. This is like we must serve God daily or serve others, not just once in our lifetime, but all the time. Amen. That what it means to serve God. So we can serve him and serve others just like how Jesus served him and served others as well. And that's it.